Hello, I'm going to show you quickly how to create some bolts and nuts in Blender 2.8 uh, using EV render engine to visualize and an add-on called Bolt Factory. So first thing you have to install the add-on. So you go into edit, preferences, search for the add-on, Bolt. To activate the add-on you just click on this check mark and a big thank you to Iron kit to do in this add-on it's very very useful so whenever you install an add-on it's important you check uh, the location where you can find the add-on once installed because it will add usually something in the menu or in the tabs but in this case it's in view 3d add mesh so once we have installed the add-on we can save the preferences and we go add mesh bolt and you have your bolt so the first thing that i realize it's very important when you're building mechanical parts and small um, objects that you want to use maybe in a, a realistic object is that they are realistic and actually this bolt follow the names of the real uh, screws and bolts so if you want an m3 for example you get an m3 and everything is sized accordingly if you want an m10 you have an m10 this is the real size of an m10 so you can create bolts you can create nuts again it's the same size so it will work perfectly let's say that we duplicate this object and uh, let's move it here so we can see the difference between the two and then we create another bolt but this time we create the nut and you can clearly see that they are exactly the right size this means that for example if you are uh, working at a project that you want to 3d print or uh, some objects that are going to fit with real bolts and nuts you can use uh, 3d bolts to check the size of your threads for example create a bolt we can create bolt nut and then we have of course the um, type the size of the bolt so these are presets you can save your own presets or you can edit the sections of the bolt manually so for example the length of the thread the external diameter the minor diameter which is the internal one you can have very weird bolts or screws the interesting part is that when you create a bolt you can change the head to a lot of different uh, shapes that are actually shapes that you can find in bolts and screws this is kind of a classic screw and we can change the bit type which is the shape where the screwdriver would go so none it's flat completely then we can have the allen key uh, shape or we can have the phillips which is the cross and of course we can change the parameters of the head too so for example we can change the size of the head it's very flexible. I really, really love this add-on. You can increase, for example, the space between the thread, which is called pitch. And of course, this makes, we can use it to make the screw um, with the point. Go back to the default bolt. The reason why I'm going back is because I would like to add a material to it so we can check how how realistic is this bolt really. I'll just change the bit to an Allen for example and then let's say that we want another bolt with different uh, with a different look. Uh, let's say that we want uh, more of a screw than a bolt and we can change the 
size. Okay. So we are looking tiny screw. So first thing I would do, it's changing the smoothing of the normals. So right click, that's the fastest way I find in 2.8. Shade smooth and give us a lot of weird normals. I will go then to the normals menu and I will say auto smooth. That means that where there are enough segments, it will look smooth. And when I want the detail to be flat, so here is set at 30 degree, everything uh, below 30 degree, as you can see, will be flat shaded and everything above that, if I increase it, everything will be smooth shaded. So normally 30 degree, it's a good compromise. Let's go with a big bone to see. It's not looking good, but once we activate auto smooth, it will make smooth some of the parts, like the parts that we want to be smooth and flat, the parts that are supposed to be flat, where the angle is very uh, sharp. Let's go with uh, two material, let's say a golden one and the silver one, like a metal silver one. Let's start with this one. To visualize the material in the best way, you should activate absolutely this mode. And you can see already that it's changed slightly. It's because there is an environment map that you can choose clicking on shading, clicking on the environment map sphere, and then selecting the one. Let's say this is an outdoor situation, but like a working outdoor, let's say, or probably even better, indoor, completely indoor, so artificial lighting. So let's start with this mini screw. Let's select new material. And it's of course a principal material. First thing I would do is metallic. So metallic, it's always zero or one for uh, realistic materials and then the roughness probably a bit less than that and we said we're gonna do this in a gold kind of material i think i want this to be a bit more rough I'm not happy with this screw, to be honest, so I'm gonna create a new one. I will keep this as a reference, but I will create a new one. No shank for my screw, and what we want to do is probably having a, a smaller threads compared to the bolt. It can be longer, actually, but thread is going to be smaller. Okay, we like that. This will change each thread um, height. We have, of course, also the pitch to make it pointy like a screw. So if we want to increase the turns, it's still kind of weird. Of course, you can save your preset, so you can save your screw as a preset and recall it if you have multiple screw in a in an object. Okay, let's go with that. So I will just remove this one, which I don't like, and work with this instead. Okay, I really 
probably have never seen a metallic screw that it's golden. But here it is. It's still not very realistic because we didn't activate ambient occlusion that gives some kind of shadow. I would add also the screen space reflections. And I will add also some bloom. This is a bit too strong. Now it seems to be working fine. The other one, I would go with something more classic. Metallic. It's already looking fine to me. It's not too glossy. Now, what I would do to increase the realism of this, if you have a close-up, you really want to see some texture on the surface. If they are seen only from a distance or if there is more detail, I think that you have more detail that you need. See how in the shading layout they are using the outdoor environment and it, everything looks so much different. It's an artificial light, studio light, we, we can change it in real time it's so fast it's unbelievable i love eevee so here we are with our bolt and we want to add some roughness i would add input and i would go with okay let's start with bump we want to add some bump to it and i will go with noise texture would do I would then go with the color to the height and yes it's a bit too much and the texture it's very very big the mapping so we can increase for example the size of it a lot I need to increase it a lot I would add some detail to it and probably now at this point we can decrease the roughness to let the bump map give the right roughness to the object. Okay, I think it looks much better. It's probably still too big the roughness, the bump map. Okay, and now we can increase it. Okay, let's check the same object without the bump map. So duplicate the, ob the material so we can change it without problems. Then we edit the bump map. Can you see the difference? The roughness, it's the same one, but the difference is just the bump map. And the bump map makes everything, every surface much more realistic. We can add the same bump map to the golden one, for example. Add bump color into height. Normal into normal, and then put it down to one. Let's edit this, it's distracting. And here we have the two objects. Let's change the environment. Thank you again to Aaron for uh, this add-on. So I hope you enjoyed this very, very short tutorial. Please subscribe to this channel. I will upload more video as soon as possible. Thank you.